This video is brought to you by Speakin. I explored Apple's previous version of the Magic Keyboard last year, and while it had some impressive qualities, it also had some significant flaws, which is why I ultimately couldn't recommend it for most people. However, this year for the new M4 iPad Pro, Apple have released a new version of the Magic Keyboard. Let's see how it performs, whether it makes up for the issues of the previous generation, and ultimately find out whether this new Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro is worth buying. And as always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. The new Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro comes in at $299 or £299. It also comes in two colors. I have the black version here, uh, and it is also available in white. So I've been using the Magic Keyboard uh, with my 11-inch iPad Pro, and the setup process is super simple, uh, classic Apple fashion here. You just want to take your iPad and then place it on top, and then instantly your iPad is not only connected, uh, it is also paired, and the keyboard is also powered. So super simple to use. Just drop it into place, and it works. Something I absolutely love to see. Uh, the keyboard itself, as you can see, will actually pair with these three little pins over here on the back. These are the smart connector pins. And then the iPad itself is going to be held in place with magnets. And I must say, once the iPad is on, it's really, really secure. Uh, I've never had the iPad wobble uh, or feel like it's going to fall off, even if I'm moving the keyboard around. I really like the way the setup looks, primarily because the iPad literally floats. And not only does this look cool, uh, it's also functional since it creates more room for the keyboard, allowing for that additional row of function keys, but more on that in a sec. And secondly, because it actually raises the iPad slightly, and this makes it more comfortable to use. So say you're typing at your desk, you don't have to look as far down, and it's going to be more comfortable and better for your neck. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Would you pay $299 for a keyboard accessory for your iPad, even if that was the best keyboard accessory on the market? I'll be sure to share my thoughts on this at the end of the video. And by the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, be sure to leave a like and also subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for your support. Now, when closed, the package is actually surprisingly thin, and this is in part thanks to the new thinner iPad Pro. But for context, uh, putting it next to my MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Air, the iPad Pro with the new Magic Keyboard is actually just about as thin as the MacBook and weighs about the same too. Unfortunately, you can't really open it with one hand uh, like you could a MacBook. It does really take two hands and you really have to apply a bit of force uh, to get it open. Now, I wouldn't consider this to be a deal breaker, uh, but it's nowhere near as elegant as say, a MacBook. The Magic Keyboard uses a two-stage hinge system, uh, much like the previous version, and then the second hinge here lets you adjust the display and hold it in any angle. But much like on the previous version, I do wish that I could angle the display just a little bit further back, especially, for example, while I'm, say, standing by my kitchen counter and I'm using my iPad on that. I wish I could just angle it back a bit further. What is neat is you can charge your iPad while using the keyboard thanks to the additional USB-C port on the left-hand side. And this also means that this will free up the USB-C port on your iPad for additional accessories like, say, hard drives or SD card readers. Plus, it also looks much better uh, to have the charge cable coming from the keyboard rather than dangling out from the iPad. Now, compared to the previous version, the 2024 version of the Magic Keyboard also brings some small but really impactful improvements that I do think make the overall experience even better. My favorite of which is that the top is now made of aluminum, and this gives a much more premium feel. It's also more durable and goes a long way to making this look and feel more like a MacBook, but more on that in a sec. The hinge itself is now also slimmer, and this goes a long way to help with the overall portability of this package here. And if you are undecided between the two colors, I will say that while I really like the look of this black model that I have, it does show fingerprints. And if this is something that bothers you, I would suggest going for the white version instead. Now, at first, when I saw this uh, aluminum top case here, I was really happy to see this, but I was worried that the metal could potentially scratch the display when the iPad is closed. But thankfully, Apple have thought of this. If you look around the keyboard, you'll find a very thin rubber seal that goes all the way around, and this will prevent the metal of the top case to potentially scratch uh, and make contact with your display. So it's great that Apple have thought of these small details. Compared to the previous version, uh, the new Magic Keyboard is also lighter and to me feels a little bit more balanced when using it. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, of course, this is still going to be a very top heavy design, unlike, say, a laptop, which is going to be more bottom heavy, but it just doesn't feel like it's going to tip over as easily as the last generation. And this does make a difference when using it on your lap. But again, having the computer uh, and the display all here in the top does ultimately still mean that this is going to be a top heavy package and won't feel as planted as, say, a typical laptop would. On the outside, the Magic Keyboard uses this soft uh, silicone plasticky material, which is the same as on the previous generation and also what Apple uses in their smart folio cases. Now, personally, I have mixed feelings about this material. I do think it is nice to hold and generally looks quite sharp. However, when it comes to long-term durability, this will be no match for the entirely aluminum design of MacBooks. 
I wish Apple added some feet at the bottom like they do with their MacBooks as this will go a long way to protect the Magic Keyboard and stop the bottom from making direct contact with whatever surface you're using it, say your table or your counter or even the floor, uh, or maybe that's just me, but this could of course scratch the product and having those feet would prevent that. And sort of on the subject of protection and durability, the Magic Keyboard of course does cover both the display as well as the back of the iPad, but the sides as well as the corners are still fully exposed and these are the most likely points of contact in the event of a drop. Next, I want to talk about the keyboard as well as the trackpad and ultimately share my experience using the new Magic Keyboard and whether I think it is worth it or not. But first, the new iPad Pro is expensive and therefore it is important to protect it. And this is where Spigen and their high quality, great value cases for the iPad come in. Starting with the Rugged Armor Pro. Now, I love using this case on my iPad as much as I do on my iPhone. The utilitarian design doesn't just look great, it also adds grip and all around protection with extra attention on the corners thanks to air cushion technology. And like with all these cases from Spigen, the Rugged Armor Pro lets you set up your iPad in theater mode, which is great for watching videos, and also in utility mode, which is perfect for typing as well as content creation. I also really like how they have this uh, secure slot for your Apple Pencil Pro so that it doesn't get lost. And then even with all this protection, the Rugged Armor Pro still delivers a really slim design that is super easy to carry or throw in a backpack. Speaking of thin, this is the Ultra Hybrid Pro and the Airskin Pro. Now what is cool about these cases is that these feature Spigen's premium vegan velo leather for a nice sleek look and feel, and they also have a crystal clear back to let the color of your iPad shine through. And what is also cool specifically about the Airskin Pro is that it uses a modular design, and this means that you can detach the cover for when you just need light protection. For something a little more unique, there's the Urban Fit. Now this soft knitted fabric really stands out and is also super comfortable to hold, and I also like how the inside of the cover uses this super soft material to help clean and protect your iPad's display. And since the cover is also magnetic, it also enables the auto sleep-wake function of the iPad to help preserve battery. To add protection and style to your iPad Pro with a case from Spigen, be sure to head to the links in the description today. All right, back to the Magic Keyboard and its performance. And I've got to tell you, using the Magic Keyboard, the overall experience really is excellent and is as good as it's going to get on the iPad. I think the aluminum, especially around the keyboard, really make it feel like a mini laptop. On the 11 inch version that I have here, the keys are almost full size, so they uh, do compromise a bit on the outer edges. So say your shift key as well as your enter key are gonna be a little bit smaller, but most importantly is the lettered keys themselves are almost full size. And of course, if you do decide to go for the larger 13 inch model, if you have the 13 inch iPad Pro, you do get a proper full size keyboard. But still, this keyboard, even on the 11 inch version, is truly excellent to type on. It only took me, say, a day to get used to it. I also wrote this video on it, uh, and it feels really great. It has a nice tactile feel, and the level of travel is perfect. Uh, really feels just like a MacBook keyboard. I also like how on iPadOS you can use a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. Uh, for example, Command Tab to quickly switch between apps. This is one I use on my Mac too. You can also do Command C V for copy paste, uh, and also Command W to say close tabs in Safari. And then if we look above the keyboard, you'll find a new row of function keys. And this is a really welcome addition as this is something that I really missed on the previous version. Uh, this lets you quickly adjust your volume, your brightness, access Siri, things like that. And I think this is great to have, but I would have loved to see Apple leave say one or two of these keys blank to then be customized by you, saying the settings for a custom app or function. The keys themselves are also backlit and the backlight adjusts automatically. So it's only on when it is needed. And I think this works really great, allowing you to type day and night. Let's take a look at the trackpad. Now, much like the keyboard, the trackpad is also improved with this newer version of the Magic Keyboard. Uh, it is now larger and this really makes it more comfortable to use. And this was again, a major gripe that I had with the previous generation, uh, but not only is it larger, it now also uses haptic feedback to produce the click sensation, much like a MacBook. So it doesn't actually move, but as a result, it gives you a really satisfying and responsive click. It also supports a variety of gestures. For example, you can do a three finger swipe up to go home, as well as a three finger swipe to the left and right to quickly switch between your open apps. Feels very much like switching between desktops on your Mac. I also wanna briefly talk about the cursor experience in iPadOS, as I would describe this to be very bubbly uh, and very elastic. The cursor kind of bounces across the screen and as a result is really different compared to the more sharp and snappy feel that you get on a MacBook or say a typical computer. Now, personally, I do prefer the more responsive and predictable feel of the the MacBook touchpad, but I must say the iPad touchpad, especially here on the Magic Keyboard, is just a lot more fun to use. But to clarify, this has less to do with the trackpad of the Magic Keyboard specifically and more to do with how iPad OS uh, integrates the cursor experience. But again, just like the keyboard, the touchpad here is best in class, especially here on the iPad and is also much improved over the previous version. 
And this brings us to the final question of, is this product worth it? Now, first, is this the best keyboard accessory that you're gonna find for the iPad? Well, the simple answer to that is yes. This is the best all-in-one iPad keyboard and trackpad package by far. When using this setup, I've gotta say, there really are times where it doesn't feel like I'm using an iPad, but instead I'm using a proper computer. And this is something I've not experienced with any other accessory, or really never experienced with my iPad before. But do you need this keyboard? Well, the simple answer is no. I still believe that the iPad is at its best like this, as a touchscreen tablet. Now, of course, if you want a keyboard, there are also gonna be many more affordable third-party options out there that cost a third or even a quarter of the price of this Magic Keyboard. For example, Logitech has some great options. And plus, if you really wanna find a budget option, uh, you can also pair just any Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to your iPad if, say, you only occasionally need a keyboard. Let's do a quick cost breakdown as well as cost comparison. So the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard, the 11 inch version will come in at $1,298. And this is very expensive, but even more so when we compare it to the M3 MacBook Air, which comes in at $1,099. So just about $200 less. And this really goes to show how expensive this setup is, not only with the iPad Pro, but especially that $300 Magic Keyboard. And this to me is still the biggest barrier when it comes to this product. So who is this keyboard actually for? Well, I think this really is geared for the true iPad enthusiasts, right? The ones that use their iPad as a computer and not like a tablet. When you have the Magic Keyboard attached and you add in another accessory, like for example, the new Apple Pencil Pro, this setup really does let you do things that a normal laptop can't do. Not to mention the level of modularity that this setup brings, right? You can simply remove the iPad, the pencil, and of course that keyboard and only use them when needed. For those true iPad enthusiasts or those who are simply not put off by the high price point, the Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro is going to offer you the best keyboard and trackpad experience for the iPad by far. But what about me? Am I gonna be keeping it? Well, ultimately, no. Primarily because of price. It just remains to be hard to justify. And second is because, well, I use my iPad as a tablet, more for content creation, less content consumption. As I said before, my travel computer is the MacBook Air. And for me, the iPad, even with the Magic Keyboard, just can't replace it. For my workflow, I simply need Mac OS. However, this does not change the fact that this is a very impressive product. Expensive, yes, but also the best by far. Plus, with its improvements over the previous generation, this Magic Keyboard specifically, I do think can be worth it for some, but only a small group of people. Let me know if you have any questions at all. As always, I will leave the purchase links down in the description. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend you check out my iPad first things to do video to help unlock the full potential of this device. Thank you so much for watching and take care.